Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question was Frederick, how can we influence the higher ups in a company to rewrite really bad legacy code? So let's get into it. So the question in question here had a little bit more context here where the person basically had, he works in this sort of situation where the project that he is on is maintained primarily by consultants. And we all know how fun that is because consultants really, really, or rather all consultant maintained projects have a tendency, it's no, no one's fault, to fall to shit faster than most other projects. It's not always true, but for there is this little prejudice against it in the industry. Generally, people who work at product companies uh, have that notion about pro uh, projects that are completely maintained by consultants. And there is actually a bit of truth to it. So in my in the subscriber uh, situation, basically he wants to do that amazing thing that basically only the people who care about their craft is going to want to do, and that is to do the rewrite. He wants to rewrite systems or refactor things and make them nicer and more maintainable. And now we need to figure out a way to give this person some tips and tricks for how to actually achieve that within a company. And I feel a little bit fortunate here because I'm in one of those rare, well, let's call it rare-ish positions where I've actually worked in a company where it's not really the case where it was all consultants because trust me when I say that it doesn't have to be an all consultant type of deal in order for something to fall to shit very quickly. But when you work for a extremely business minded company, getting a chance to do any type of refactoring is always going to face off against one fundamental thing. And that is money. Money, 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 money. Business value, features, things that will actually on paper produce money somehow. Contracts, deals, campaigns, perks for the sales representative, anything like that. Now these things are, as you may have noticed, if you've worked for any amount of time in this industry, the, well, it's not just this industry, of course, but these are the things that matter. It's the thing that makes the world go round. It is in fact the biggest tell to whether or not you work in a company who cares at all about anything else. If you are working in a non-critical area, and that is usually anything that isn't sales or product or like something like that. If you're not getting anything through, then it means that nobody cares. And that's this harsh truth that this, uh, this is what I told the subscriber. The harsh truth of this is that even though, and he said so, and I mean, this is usually the case, that's usually why you want to refactor. Even if you have legacy issues that causes bugs and delays and things take longer to develop, in this case, they didn't, he told me that he didn't even have like automated tests or anything like that. Even if all of this is true, all of it, it can all be true. What's always going to happen is that the company or the people, the movers and the pushers, they will weigh the value of improving things over the value or against the value of just continuing as you are and just kind of living like throwing money at the problem, right? And that is a very, very tough thing to accept. And it's something that is sometimes a good reason. Uh, there's a good reason for it sometimes and sometimes there's not a good reason. Most of the time there's not a good reason. But you see, it's a money equation. You see, even your frustration, even the delays that it takes and like all the bugs and all these issues, there is a time factor, a money value associated with that. And in a business person's mind, it's very simple. The equation balances. If you need to say, if you have a really shitty legacy system, even in such a scenario, if the people making money from that, uh, from the features that you are developing, or making more money from you focusing on actually developing developing these features, in as opposed of actually maintaining the product, you will not win. Like the equation, it makes sense. You're making money, 
And most, you'd be, you would be surprised how many companies who actually have this mindset. They don't care so much about the sustainability and good engineering practices. They care about money. And as an engineer, that might be a very hard thing to do. So what you have to do in order to change people's minds in such an organization is one fundamental thing. And that is to prove that the issues that we, you have with the project is affecting revenue somehow, it's affecting productivity, affecting time to market, affecting something. Because if it's just your little gut feeling and you go into the meeting room and say, hey guys, we really are working in a really shitty situation here. We need to take some time to fix these things. Uh, this is what I was saying, like this is where it really determines like the cul culture of the company. Most companies, depending on culture, they will just say, oh yeah, that seems really harsh. Uh, but we have all of these deadlines and this backlog here and these promises that we need to deliver on that are it's already been signed by the business team, it's already done, you need to focus on that. And usually that's what they're going to say. Some companies will actually say, oh yeah, maybe we need to take this seriously. The people who actually realize, like have a more long-term mindset, if you will. Unless, of course, they plan on just pull, pulling the plug on the project within a certain amount of time. And right now they're just in maintenance mode or something like that. But usually that's how it goes. So for you, that means that the only thing that you can do in order to get them to listen to you is to prove that the changes that you are suggesting is somehow going to make a difference in something that they care about because they don't care about good engineering practices. They don't care what language you use. They don't give a shit about your education background or if you're the smartest person ever born or if you're using functional or object-oriented programming. They don't give a shit about that. And this is what I've told you many times, guys. These things matter, but they only matter to technical people. Most companies don't give a shit about this. They just, they just want it to work. That's it. That's all that they want. So what you need to do is to track the time that you, in, that you invest in certain things. And that is a, this is a big job. It's, a, it's, a, it's going to take a lot, of, a lot of effort for you to do this. So over time, you need to track everything that you put, all the time that you put into stories and to bugs. Bugs are a very good, way, a good, good thing if you can prove that things that you're getting more and more bugs and that you actually have to sp spend a lot of time on this. Because bugs, like there is no business person or like no person around that can somehow in their mind make bugs into something that is necessary. Like it's just wasted time. It's completely wasted, wasted time. And then basically after tracking this for quite some time, you can definitively prove with statistics or with data, armed with data, you can prove that you're actually seeing a decay in the situation. And then one magical thing will happen. And this is where this is the, you, you really, really will have to test your seniority. And that is, or rather your personal maturity, let's call it that. And that is when you go into that meeting room, you show them the numbers and say, hey guys, like, uh, we see here that there's a decay in productivity and we have these issues and so forth that we should really take a look at them, like figuring out how to do this. And then the bean counters will take that under advisement. And then they will say either, yeah, you get 10% capacity to deal with this sort of thing because usually you don't get more than that. That's like what you can hope for. Like basically 10%, like they will give you a time budget for solving these sorts of issues uh, or they will just say, oh, okay, yeah, that seems really bad. Man. But we have all of these features here that we need to deliver on these promises and these contracts. They, that's, you know, that's, the, that's the focus here. Like even if you prove that things are getting worse or that things are bad, they might not even matter because of what I said. Like it's, some companies do not care enough to actually fix these things as long as things are being produced. And that's the, th that's the thing that uh, you will have, to, that's the thing you, I want you to take away from this. Even if you can prove, which is the best way of solving this issue, that things are actually getting worse, that you're spending more time on bugs and you can actually put a money value to the to the cost of the legacy that you're dealing with, it's very unlikely 
that you will get to do a big rewrite. Big rewrites only exist in fantasy projects for the most part or in very specific companies and they usually don't actually work. It is a big risk to do a big rewrite because that's basically stopping all feature development for quite some time. Rewriting a really complicated system into something nicer, which is in of itself almost impossible, and then finally delivering basically the same value as if you didn't do anything. And that's the hard sell here. That's the thing that you need to think about. Refactor, guys, means absolutely nothing to a business person. So unless you can make them understand that this is going to earn money or increase developer productivity or something like that, you're not going to get it because you're not making a sell. You're basically saying, I will do something magically that is going to just make things better. And for most people, what they're going to hear is that, oh, it's going to make me happier. And unless they care about your happiness, they're not going to do it. Like you're not going to get the time. And most of the time, the best strategy is actually not to do a big rewrite. It's actually to story by story set up and basically set up a migration strategy for how to basically move a legacy system into something nicer. So learning how to effectively work with legacy code is one of the best personal investments that you can make as a software developer. Because trust me when I say this, unless you're working on a greenfield project, you're going to have legacy and you're going to have to figure out some way of dealing with it. Have a great day.